Spurgis in Society is a Manchester-based documentary about the relationship between autism and mental health. Over the course of the filming process, I was introduced to a number of interesting autistic individuals, and struck by the quality of these experiences and opinions, I decided to create a behind-the-scenes video series to showcase these marvellous people. This is one of them. I obviously know a bit about your job and role, but could you give a general outline of what you do and why you got this role? Okay, so um, I started out as a primary school teacher and was linked with a lot of schools that had autism specialists. So um, I learnt a lot about autism and special needs and wanted to sort of broaden my interest. So I, I did a lot of courses and then eventually went for a job as a teacher in charge of um, specialist provision which provided an outreach service to about 100 schools in North Yorkshire. So what I do is I go in and I advise them on how to teach children with autism and Asperger's how to support them, how to support their families. Um, I also do training, so I do whole school training. Um, I write some of the training for North Yorkshire. Um, <clears throat> I also deliver training to uh, parents in workshops as well, post-diagnosis. So it's quite varied as well as teaching children directly on InReach. Um, a lot of it's an advisory role. So it's, um, so it's quite there's lots of different elements to it, but it's very interesting and varied. What kind of sport or training around Austin have you had, if any? Um, with the focus on um, what would be, you know, helpful, mm. helpful training, mm -hmm. and maybe some of the training that mm. you don't agree with or something. Okay. Um, to do with education or your own experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I've, had, I've had a lot of training as part of my job. I did my Masters in Autism, which helped hugely because I got to see a lot of famous people lecturing and um, lots of different perspectives as well. When we, look at, when we look at the autism spectrum, you look at a triad of impairment, but I think it's more of a quadrant now because you've got the sensory aspect. So I've had a lot of training from speech therapists in the speech and language side of things, occupational therapists. Um, I've also had um, uh, social skills training and uh, signing and um, support from charities such as I can. I'm a licensed tutor for them and L plan, which is a um, speech and language um, business who I've set up to support with speech and language difficulties, which a lot of our children on the spectrum have. Um, I think because I've had all those aspects, I'm able to approach children with a more holistic uh, view rather than just looking at one aspect of their needs. Um, so it does mean that I can um, ensure that the environment for their learning is, is more apt for them rather than just looking at one aspect. <clears throat> I think one of the problems is that a lot of perhaps independent companies that um, that are sought out to support children with autism look at one area for a child and, and try and focus on that or try and you know we took a lot of people talk about cures for autism and we know it's a developmental di developmental dis disability or disorder so it we know that it's ongoing and it's not going to be cured but we can again scaffold and support it so that children and young people can cope better in in the in society and in the environment so um so i think probably one of the most important aspects are to raise awareness but not just to raise awareness of autism because i know there's been a lot on television there's been a lot of certainly a lot of training for teachers on how to um, identify children with autism. But I think sometimes they're put into a little box and you know, so you teach one child with autism, you teach one child with autism. 
you can't put all children into that autism box. So you have to really look at all those different areas like the sensory, <clears throat> the social, the speech, um, the communication. And you have to you have to be able to tailor um, tailor your skills to those needs. So what I I'd, I'd like to do is just um, ensure that there's a lot more training for the the depth in the different areas, and also there's more training for parents so that the community is more aware. Because quite often we get children not invited to parties, or we get um, children that are not understood, and their their children are asked to stay away from them. So I've started in schools doing a little bit more of um, inviting inviting parents of, of children that are typically developing to come to workshops so that they can understand autism better. Because it takes a tribe, doesn't it, to raise a child, really. Have you encountered any difficulties with teaching autistic individuals? So... Um, I think I think there's a lot of difficulties with teaching children on the spectrum. There's an awful lot of strengths, but a lot of our children are misunderstood, particularly girls that mask their social skills um, because they're very good at copying the girls and they're naturally more sociable. So that can be really difficult. Um, I think the thing that I underestimated with children on the spectrum is um, the level of anxiety that can be caused by um, social communication. It can also be usually caused by any sensory needs as well, and that's really underestimated. So when you've got a very busy mainstream school or you've got very busy environments, it can cause a lot of anxiety for the child because they, they feel like they can't control it, that they're very scared, you know, they're in a world that Quite often they don't understand or they're having to make sense of it. So um, I think really, I, I think as a professional I underestimated the anxiety. Also the a lot of the sensory needs can, can that's where the challenging behaviour comes from and I've dealt with a lot of children with challenging behaviour. But once you actually, you don't take it personally, you actually dig back and track back and, and have that system of looking at what's triggered it and you can see and you really have to dig in there, you really have to observe and look at everything, at, at, you know, your reaction, your actions, what other people are doing, the environment, um, <clears throat> how the child's feeling, what's happened earlier in the day or what's happened earlier in the week. And, you know, quite often those things are out of your control, so that's quite tricky. But if over time that anxiety builds and it's not it's not addressed, it can, you know, it, we know that quite often it can tip into mental health difficulties. And we were warned that at di um, diagnosis with my own son, actually, that later on, particularly children with Asperger's, um, can develop mental health difficulties because of high anxiety and trying to fit with social norms. I don't think we need to like break down that that need to fit with social norms at a young age. So I think those are, those are kind of the main the main things. Also, I think a lot of parents do do put ceilings on children. They'll say, you know, you can't do this because you are all you know because you have autism. So they're never exposed to certain situations and social situations. Whereas they they need to go and experience it time after time in a structured way, in a supported way, so that then they can deal with it and they know what to expect the next time, so it's not as anxiety driven. So I think those are the main things because that can all then move forward to reducing anxiety, reducing stress and mental health difficulties, whereas you know, if you don't address that, then that can heighten it. Brilliant. <clears throat> Very good. Um, okay. Well, three more questions. Okay. Um, so has teaching um, autistic individuals enlightened you to any <clears throat> perspectives on life that you otherwise wouldn't have had? Okay, so um, I personally, I think any difference should be celebrated. I don't see autism or anything else as a disability. We always talk about differences, a disability. Um, it is a very different way of thinking. I quite often describe it as having an Xbox and a PS4, 
both got the same purpose and function but they're just hardwired differently and um, I think once you start to think outside the box and you see the, the strengths that somebody has rather than the difficulties um, I think that's what you have to focus on and you have to help them and structure it because you know it's not a it's not a straight line it is a spectrum you know and there are loads of strengths I mean um the children that I work with, I have worked with, they're an absolute joy, they're very affectionate, they're very empathic, they can develop skills very quickly, they're very intu quite intuitive quite often, um, they're very, very kind and very, but actually very vulnerable, very vulnerable to other children, society, other people. <clears throat> so I think that, you know, a lot of care has to be taken and a lot of support needs to be there. If I'd never gone down this route, I think I'd have maybe felt isolated as a mother. I think I needed to because I was, um, because I'm a mother of a child with um, Asperger's, I feel that, that because I've gained all this knowledge, you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have been able to do that, that perhaps I've been able to guide that a little bit more and, <clears throat> and be a little bit more positive maybe. But, um, but I do, I do feel that, um, you know, people do need to sort of look, look and change their mindsets a little bit more, um, to just look at different ways of thinking, because it's all about embracing that diversity. Brilliant. Very good. Okay. Um, so, this is an interesting one. Many <laughs> adult autistics uh, believe that autism makes up a big part of their personality. Mm -hmm is something to be celebrated as diversity. Others believe autism is a dis disability. There's many, many negative effects on their life. Um, what are your opinions and analysis of those two stances? It doesn't have to be your mm. direct opinion. You can talk about you know, each of them and sort okay. of mindsets that they may have and stuff. Okay. I think, I think um, it depends on what pe individual people have been. Um, exposed to so if you've been brought up again with that can't do attitude then you're going to always think that your difference holds you back rather than thinking actually my difference is a strength and actually I can use this to my advantage so I think it's very much about yeah it can be a nurture nature thing so I think it's more about the nurturing and that positive attitude that yeah you can go for it yeah you can do it yeah you can do it but you need this support and you need to be aware of that it certainly adds to people's personalities definitely i know that um a lot of our young people have a lot of strengths and abilities who are higher intellect perhaps you know able to challenge things in a more of a black and white way um so good at debating you know really throwing up issues that can um, quite often be you know perhaps not at the forefront um, I do think that um, a lot of people do find it um, particularly if you if you have real impacts with mental health you can quite often I know my own son has quite often said you know it's because I have asked why do I have Asperger's why me because actually, you know, I don't want to feel like this or I don't want to, to behave like this or I don't want to be in this situation. And it's because of my, my, men, my Asperger's. But I think that coupled with that is, if, you know, if you have that huge strength, which a lot of our children on the spectrum do have, that huge strength to actually overcome that and to be able to say, right, I have so many skills and so many gifts that I can... I can overcome it, I can, that thirst for knowledge and finding out about themselves, trying to improve, trying to improve social skills and so forth is, is um, can be a real, a real strength in combating that and moving up and moving forwards. <clears throat> but again, I think it's about the network that's, that surrounds people. I think if it's positive, then it's good. If it's just laden in the med, if it's just completely being immersed in, in medicine and 
um, going to a clinic and then out of the clinic and actually, you know, this because of your autism. I've heard a lot of young people, children and young people say, I can't do that because because I'm autistic or my mum says I'm autistic or my dad says I'm autistic. You know, if you, if you grow up with that mindset, then you're never going to move. You're always going to be stuck. And I think that is where people have that negative impact. So I think it's really important for society to change that view that actually, yeah, you are autistic. Yeah, you are typically developing. Yeah, you are whatever label, but you're still just you. You are that unique person. You are individual and you can do what you need to do to become who you want to be. Oh, that's really good. But you're a lot better than me, it's so okay. I'm kind of jealous, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you should, you should be a problem, right? Oh, okay. uh, so, the last one if you could change something, some things about the way that society deals with autism, mm -hmm. what would you change? I think having experienced the mental health systems that are currently in place, I think there needs to be a lot more psychiatrists and psychologists that have a particular skill or particular specialism with autism because we know that people that have just general skills don't actually think outside the box to how somebody is wired and how somebody might be experiencing mental health in a different way to somebody who's who's um, neurotypical who's not got autism um, so I would change that. I would have more specialists and, and a more catered environment for delivering that those, that mental health specialism and support. So it has to be done in a very, very different way. And we've, myself, I've searched for psychiatrists and psychologists that can do that job post-18 and there is a gap. There is a huge gap. <laughs>